Hello everyone, my name is Aura and welcome to the 30th devlog of my base building game Chambers of Devious Design Let's start straight away with what I have done in the last two weeks And the theme of the first changes is quality of life Alright, so this red room here, when you complete it It will activate the completion bonus of another neighboring room so let's see what happens when I complete it. So it, it was <laughs> quite fast. I don't know if you noticed, but the new thing that there was, was this like small red little <laughs> flashing light balloon that jumped to the orange room. So previously there wasn't any like visual indication uh, which room it activated. There was this like kind of like text that floated up, but other than that, uh, okay, it's this player turns. So let's let's try it again. So other than the text that pops up, that text, there wasn't any other indication. So I figured it would be nice to add something extra visual, so you have a better understanding what is actually going on when you complete the room. And similarly, I added the same balloon but in different color to uh, this yellow room and the green room and I added only to those rooms because those are kind of like the effects that affect other rooms. So the green room increases its own score based on the number of neighbors. So I have like this balloons jumping from each neighbor kind of like just to again give something nice visual to add to it. And then the yellow room will give one score to each neighbor so it has kind of like the opposite effect as the green room. So yeah, that's one change that I think will improve the visual readability of the game. Then another thing I did was adjust the colors of the room icons. Previously the colors were kind of close, I mean yellow symbolized a yellow room, but the shade of the yellow wasn't really exact and in some cases there was a bit of a gap between the room color and the simple color. So I went ahead and tuned them up a bit. Many of them still aren't exact matches but I think this little adjustment should help kind of like <laughs> make the connection between the simple and the actual room type a bit easier. And then another quality of light change I made was this panel here. So previously it was kind of bare bones. I mean it served its purpose but I saw some room for improvement. So yeah this is the new panel here and what I have changed is that uh, the like numbers like one, two, three yeah, next to the symbols have been replaced by plus symbols. I think it makes it look a bit nicer. And in addition to that I added this like one dynamic string that will tell the player how many rooms he or she already has of that type. So it will make the decision a bit easier for the lazy players. Then I also went through all of the dialogues to fix some typos and in some case I had like the wrong character on the screen so I fixed those also. and. One additional change I made was that previously I had the character sound play out if the character or the character pose changed. And also in some cases I had this like manual trigger when I felt like uh, the character should make a noise. But then I figured like, I don't know, I felt like it's just better to play out the character sound like every line when a character is speaking. So yeah, that's one change I made, which will simplify the like uh, dialogue data a bit, and also yeah, I, I think it it will also make the dialogue play out a bit better. Then another a more technical change I made is related to the generation of doors in my rooms. Previously, how I handled the door generation was that for each different shape. I had manually set all the doors that could be placed in that shape. 
and while that was a bit of manual work, it worked really great. But one issue I noticed uh, after <laughs> playing the game for a fair bit was that the doors were often found in the same places in the shapes. Especially with the bigger shapes, the amount of like possibilities for door placement was kind of limited. So in the game, <laughs> you often wish like, oh, if only that door was in a different place in that shape. And the truth was that like it could never be in that position. And when you played the game for uh, quite a while, you started noticing then, and I thought it really became a issue that I wanted to solve. So I wrote a little script that takes in the collider information of that shape, and then based on that information it tries to place the doors in the right locations. It's not perfect, I mean some irregular shapes will <laughs> confuse the script, and then also if there's like a counterclockwise turn in the shape, then the like door placement algorithm also gets kind of like out of shape. But instead of perfecting the script, I figured the like better value solution is just that the script will create like this list of door placement suggestions to me, and then I will manually go through that list and check if I need to make some adjustments myself. This was a really effective way of handling it and I would say that like in 95% of the door placement locations the script was right so so I really didn't need to make so many manual adjustments myself. Then I also met this addition that some rooms can also have this like rare uh, door placement options. Currently it's actually on this one shape that has this but yeah, you can see these red dots here, so doors can be placed in these locations also, but they should be more rare. When I had all these possible door locations defined, then the next step was just to define in the script like how the doors could be placed in these locations. So basically only one adjustment I made to my previous script was that now there's like this vector to distance check when doors are placed so that it is much less likely that these doors will be placed like next to each other. So by that I want to avoid that for example this 4x4 room. I don't want it to spawn just like with these three green dots here uh, for the doors. So rather it will be like maybe one on each side, like um, I think it it is possible for it to spawn with just these three dots here as the doors, but but yeah, it's it's not very likely. Oh, and by the way, I highly recommend you start using gizmos in Unity. I hadn't actually used them myself either, but I started using them with this new new feature, and I have to say they are really handy, really easy to implement and really handy. So for example, previously I was just kind of like doing the math in my head, like uh, which coordinates the uh, door should be in. But like now I can just adjust the locations in the editor and it will autom automatically update like uh, what is the coordinate and where it will be placed. And also the rotation I think should be, let's see, does it actually? Oh yeah, so it's only configured to this four directions, so yeah. Yeah, Gizmos are really handy, I would say. It's a good idea to start using them. Then I have also made progress on the localization front, but it's it's still ongoing and maybe not nothing exciting to tell about that. And then also some bug fixes, maybe one of those I could mention a bit. So one issue I have had uh, is the resolution and the aspect ratio and how those are handled. My game only supports uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio and previously I had a 
script in place that kind of like enforced that. The script worked really well in most situations, but there were at least two cases where there were issues. One of those was that uh, if you were, for example, on a laptop that wasn't the same exact aspect ratio, if you try to increase the resolution above what your laptop can support, uh, instead of the script limiting it to the right resolution, it actually expanded the window to cover the whole screen. And the reason why I hadn't caught this was that I am using a three monitor setup for myself. And if I try to expand the window above the like resolution that I have, uh, it's not an issue. It just expands on the other screens. So it, it might be hard to play that way, but it doesn't cause any issues, I would say. But if you're just on a one screen, it works differently. So then it forces the screen to uh, uh, the window to cover the whole screen. And then if your screen was not the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, well, yeah, then the <laughs> game also like didn't force the aspect ratio and buttons were like in the wrong places and things like that. Nothing game breaking, but still <laughs> kind of annoying. So that's one uh, issue I needed to solve. Then the other issue was that uh, if you played the game on a monitor that is not your primary monitor, uh, it actually detected the like resolution of your primary monitor. So in that case also the aspect ratio could sometimes in some <laughs> rare cases also go out of sync. And before I tell how I fix this issue, I will shortly describe why it wasn't like super straightforward to fix. And that is that it is actually kind of hard to tell what the game window resolution and the resolution of the monitor you are playing on, what those are in all situations. And the reason why that is difficult is that in Unity you can use this command screen.currentResolution to tell the current resolution of the screen you are playing on. But if you are playing with full screen, then that current resolution is actually the same as your game's resolution. So even though your game, uh, even though your like monitor resolution might be something crazy like 4K, uh, if you're playing the game with full screen on a lower resolution, then the screen resolution is also that same. And while this is actually working as it should, it caused me issues in detecting how big of a game window could like fit on the screen in some cases. And in some cases it also led to those aspect ratio problems. My first solution to this problem was that uh, always when the resolution uh, was adjusted, even when the game started, <laughs> I just forced the game to go in windowed mode so that it could like reliably detect the resolution of the monitor and then the resolution of the game window and then use that information to like make sure everything is, everything is correct and that actually worked really well but when I was testing it out I found it really annoying that the like game would flash kind of like when you started it uh, because it went windowed for one frame and then back to full screen for one frame if you were playing it full screen. So that led me to thinking like how could I improve this and it was a good thing because the second solution I came up with was actually miles better. The way I handle it now is that whenever the resolution is set then I wait one frame for the effect to take place and then I just check what the game window resolution is now and 
if it is the exact same that uh, the game tried to set it as, then that is okay. But if it is any different than what uh, it was supposed to be, then the change is kind of like reverted and I think I will just... Yeah, I don't remember exactly what happens. I think it will try a lower resolution in that case. With this new script I can detect if the device is trying to force the game window to be like either bigger or smaller than the resolution it's supposed to be. So yeah, at least based on my testing it works really well and it is really simple. So yeah, win-win. And that's actually everything I did in the last two weeks. As you can see my background is a bit different. So yeah, we moved two weeks ago and luckily the move went really smoothly. But still there's lots of things to do when you move so I unfortunately haven't had so much time to develop but luckily I still made some progress. But yeah, I would love to hear what you think about the changes I have made to the game and if there's anything else in your mind, please do let me know in the comments, I would love to hear that. Yeah, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.